The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And LSMFT, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Remember what happens at the tobacco auction. Year after year, at market after market, independent tobacco experts present at the auctions can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Just listen to what Mr. James W. Adams, for 22 years an independent tobacco warehouseman of South Boston, Virginia, recently said about the fine tobacco he's seen bought by the makers of Lucky Strike. I've been a tobacco warehouseman for 22 years, and down through the years, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco, real quality tobacco, the kind of tobacco that's bound to give a good smoke. For 15 years, Lucky's have been my regular smoke. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, take a tip from the experts and light up a Lucky. Light up a really fine cigarette. Puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack's home in Beverly Hills. Jack and Rochester are puttering around the kitchen, and at the moment, they're defrosting and cleaning out their refrigerator. Well, it's all wiped out, Rochester. Now, put the butter back first. Yes, sir. Say, boss, what do you want me to do with this leftover roast beef? Uh, save it. We'll make hash out of it. How about this leg of lamb we had last Thursday? Mm, save that, too. We'll make hash out of it. What shall I do with this leftover roast pork? Mm, save it. We'll make hash out of that, too. Well, what shall I do with this 30 pounds of leftover hash? <laughs> Uh, save it. We'll make stew out of it. <laughs> Thought I had you that time. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. What's in that? What's in what? In that round, flat can in the freezing compartment. Oh, I just put that in there since the weather got hot. What is it? The film of the horn blows at midnight. <laughs> well, take it out. And put it in this package. I want to store it there all summer. Say, that's a mighty big package. What's in it? Uh, Miss Livingston's fur coat. <laughs> I made her a better deal than I.J. Fox. <laughs> well, that's about all, Rochester. You can close the refrigerator. Yes, sir. Oh, Rochester, open the refrigerator again. I want to take out some ham for a sandwich. It's too late, boss. The time lock is set for tomorrow morning. Gee, <laughs> I'm so hungry. Oh, by the way, uh, Professor LeBlanc is coming over pretty soon to give me a violin lesson. So I better get... I'll get it, boss. Mr. Benny's residence, star of stage, screen, radio, and remember our slogan. During the summer, you can save some cash by storing your furs right next to our hash. <laughs> hmm. Hello, may I speak to Mr. Jack Benny, please? Just a moment, miss. It's for you, boss. Thanks. Hello? Mr. Benny, this is Betty Stewart of the Associated Press. Associated Press? Yes. Last week in a press interview, Fred Allen said that if you're as bad on television as you are on radio, people will receive your program on a 10-inch airwick. <laughs> oh, uh, Fred Allen said that, huh? Yes. Now, the Associated Press wants to know if you'd like to make any comment about Mr. Allen. I certainly would. Uh, put a man on the phone. Oh, that's quite all right, Mr. Benny. I'm used to that kind of language. I used to work in a bingo parlor. Oh. Now, do you have anything you'd like to say about Mr. Allen? Yes, yeah, you can quote me as saying, the reason Fred Allen doesn't go on television is because he doesn't want to spoil an illusion. An illusion? Yes. On the radio, everybody thinks he's alive. 
unquote. Goodbye. Goodbye. Who was that, boss? Uh, the Associated Press. One of our competitors? No, no, Roger. That's a newspaper. They don't press clothes. <laughs> They gather news for all the... Come in. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. What'd you say, Chester? Hello, Mr. Harris. <laughs> Phil, what are you doing around here? Well, Jackson, there's something I want to talk to you about. Oh, what is it? Well, I'd, I'd like to talk to you alone. Rossi, would you mind leaving the room? Okay. Uh, what do you want to talk to me about, Phil? Close the other door, will you? Sure. Uh, what is it, Phil? Jackson, uh, I want to borrow some money. <laughs> money? Uh, how, how much? Two thousand dollars. You know, Phil... <laughs> <laughs> you know, Phil, life is funny. <laughs> You know, if we were doing a radio program now and you came in and asked me for $2,000, I'd have to turn you down with a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now we're not on the radio, so I can turn you down without a joke. <laughs> Isn't life funny? But, Jackson, now, wait a minute. You can't turn me down. I gotta have $2,000. Phil, what in the world do you need all that money for? Well, after we go off the air this summer, I'm going on tour with my orchestra. On tour? Yeah, and we're going to go to Texas, then Louisiana, then through Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. Why are you only going through the South? Look, Dad, I only know one song, and I ain't taking no chances. <laughs> well, well, Phil, what do you need the $2,000 for? I mean, traveling expenses? No, 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 that's all taken care of. But I promised all my boys I'd buy them new tuxedos. Well, it's about time. At least they'll look nice while they're playing. Oh, no, they ain't going to wear them on the bandstand. They're going to use them to pick up extra money during the daytime. Tuxedos in the daytime? Yeah, they double as pallbearers. <laughs> no. Sure. And Remley's in great demand. Remley as a, as a pallbearer? Why? Both of his arms are on the same side. <laughs> Funny, I never noticed that while he was playing the guitar. I mean, well, look, Phil, I'd like to lend you the money, but... Uh... Now, wait a minute, Jackson, wait a minute. Now, I'm not asking this as a friend. I'm willing to make it the regular business deal. I'll sign papers and everything. Oh. Well, would you be willing to put up security? Yeah. But not like the last time. We missed the kids. <laughs> All right, Phil, you don't have to put up security. Just sign the papers as usual. Oh, Rochester, Rochester. What is it, boss? Uh, Mr. Harris is going to sign a legal agreement. Uh, bring me a sheet of paper, a pen, and a sharp knife. Yes, sir. All right, Phil, roll up your sleeve. <laughs> oh, Jackson, can I sign an ink this time? <laughs> Well, okay, you've been with me a long time. I'll go down to my vault to get the money. You write out an I.O.U. A what? An I.O.U. How you spell it? <laughs> Rochester will show you. I'll be back in a few minutes. I'm going down to the vault. Playful. I hope the drawbridge is strong. Word. You can take it with you. <laughs> oh, 
It's you, Mr. Benny. Yes. How are you, Ed? Fine, fine. Glad you came down, Mr. Benny. I haven't had a chance to thank you for my Christmas present. <laughs> did, you, did you like it, Ed? It's the nicest calendar I ever had. <laughs> good, good. And, Ed, isn't that a pretty picture on it? Yes. What is it? It's a girl. Oh. <laughs> and uh, what's that thing she's holding? Oh, that's a telephone. Oh. That's a girl and that's a telephone. Yes, it was invented in 1876. The girl? No, no, no. <laughs> the, the telephone. Oh. Now, excuse me, Ed, I'd like to open the safe. Should I commit suicide? No, no, Ed, just close your eyes, that's all. <laughs> now, let's see. Right to 45. Left to 60. Back to 15. And left to 110. There. That reminds Reminds me, I must ask Phil what he's going to play on the program. <laughs> now, let's see. Um, Phil wants $2,000. I'll take $2 for my violin teacher. And I better take an extra five. I may go to Las Vegas for the weekend. <laughs> there. There. Well, goodbye, Ed. Take care of yourself. I will. Oh, by the way, Mr. Benny, would you mind mailing this letter for me? No, no, not at all. It's very important. Would you put it on the pony yourself? <laughs> huh? Oh, no, Ed. They, they take it by trains now and airplanes. I'll explain it to you later. So long, Ed. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Oh, Phil, Phil! Here I am, Jackson, right over here, right in front of you. Oh, my eyes haven't got used to the light yet. <laughs> hey, here's your money. Thanks, Jackson, I really appreciate it. You're welcome, but don't forget, I want it back in 90 days. So long, Phil. So long, Giannini. <laughs> See, I hope Phil doesn't borrow money from me too often. He can't afford the interest. Oh, well, that's his worry. Uh, Say, boss, while you were down the vault, Professor LeBlanc's wife called and said he wouldn't be able to come over and give you a violin lesson. Why not? She said he sprained his ankle and can't go out. Oh, well, gee, I don't want to miss my lesson. I'll go over to his house. Rochester, I'll get my violin. You get the car. You can't use the car, boss. The two front wheels are out of line. Are they much out of line? I think so. One's in the garage and the other's on Wilshire Boulevard. <laughs> Oh, well, then I'll take the streetcar. I'll get my violin now and... Oh, darn it, just when I'm in a hurry. Come in. Well. Hiya, Jack. Hoagie, Hoagie Carmichael. <laughs> well, Hoagie, this is quite a surprise. What brings you around here? Well, Jack, I won't take up much of your time. I just thought maybe you'd like to buy a song. By a song? Mm-hmm. What's a man like you, Hoagie Carmichael, doing, going around from door to door selling songs? Well, Jack, it's a long story. Remember that night three years ago at the Academy Awards when Sam Goldwyn called me Hugo? Yeah. Well, ever since then, Hugo became a sensation. <laughs> well, what about Hoagie? He is a bum. <laughs> Wait a minute, don't tell me Hoagie Carmichael, the man who wrote Stardust and Old Buttermilk Sky, can't sell a song. I can't understand it either, Jack, and I have some wonderful new ones. I just finished a beautiful love song called She Didn't Realize He Was Alive Till He Got Him Alone on Mulholland Drive. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I heard that. Then I wrote another one called I Bought a Television Set for My Girl and Now She's in Love with Milton Berle. <laughs> Very good, very good. Yeah, then I wrote another song that was very topical. What's the name of it? 
Everything is strictly kosher since the Giants got back Leo DeRocher. <laughs> song isn't popular? It struck out on the hit parade. <laughs> Gee, that's a shame. Yeah, I got a new one I brought along with me, and I want you to listen to it. Well, Hoagie, what makes you think I'll be interested in it? Well, just let me sing it for you, and you'll know the reason why. I've got the music right here. Well, good. I'll get my violin and accompany you. Wait a minute, Jack. It's a new song. Give it a fighting chance. <laughs> okay, okay. Come on, let's hear it, Hoagie. I'm getting tired of these cattle and a herding them On a horse that's a hoping he'll die I'm going down to a ranch and a widow named Blanche Where the living is easy as pie I'm getting tired of these tumbleweed cigarettes Tired of eating big beans from a tin I'm going to marry that ranch and the widow named Blanche Though I know she's as ugly as sin Then I'll be smoking luckies L-S-M-F-T and all day With the shaving and the shine and tobacco that's fine How could I do any better? Cause life will be just ducky And in a lazy sort of a way I'll be boss of that ranch if I have to kiss Blanche And thank my lucky stars I met her I'm getting tired of this dreaming about city life Without a red hot scent in my jeans I'm going down to a ranch and a widow named Blanche Who is known as the lady of means I'm getting tired of these mocking birds are mocking me. When I'm a cousin, things are biting my hide. I'm going to marry that ranch and the widow named Blanche. Though I know she's seven foot wide, then I'll be smoking luckies, LSMFT, and all day. With the shaving and the shine and tobacco, that's fine. How could I ever feel keener? Cause life will be. Just ducky And in a lazy sort of a way I'll be boss of that branch If I have to kiss Blanche To stay where the grass grows green Hoagie, that was really swell. I like the way the commercial was worked in there, you know? Uh, thanks, Jack. Uh, would you like to buy that song? Well, I haven't got time to discuss it right now. You see, I've got to catch the streetcar and go take a violin lesson. Oh. Well, call me tomorrow, Hoagie. Okay. So long, Jack. So long. <laughs> uh, Rochester, Rochester, I'm going to take my lesson now. I'll be home for dinner. Step to the rear of the car, please. Uh, pardon me. Hey, wait a minute, bud. <laughs> huh? Did I get your fare? Oh, oh my fare. Uh, here's a transfer. Say, uh, you're Jack Benny, aren't you? Yes, yes. You were in London, England last summer, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, how did you know? This transfer you gave me is from the Piccadilly Bus Company. <laughs> oh, well, I, I didn't mean to give you that one. That was a mistake. Is it? Here's a dime. Thanks. I'll, uh, I bet you're surprised to see a celebrity like me riding a streetcar. Nah. When they're on their way down, they save every way they can. <laughs> Step to the rear of the car, please. Step to the rear of the car. All right, all right. Let me know when it's West 6th Street. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hello, Mr. Benny. Huh? You can sit here by me. Oh, oh hello, Dennis. Where are you going? I'm going down to the doctor's and have my appendix taken out. Where are you going? <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I hear that right? Dennis, you're going to have your appendix out? Why not? I have an insurance policy that entitles me to an operation. 
Well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. No, it isn't. After I read my policy, I thought it would be smarter to have my appendix taken out. Why? It was either that or have a baby. <laughs> heaven's sakes. Dennis, what kind of insurance is this you've got anyway? Oh, it's a good policy, Mr. Benny. It's full coverage. Full coverage? Yeah, if a truck runs over me, they fix the truck. <laughs> well, let's not talk about that anymore. Mind if I read your newspaper, kid? No, go ahead. I'm finished with it. Thanks. You know, they lifted the blockade in Anaheim. I know. I... They lifted the blockade in Anaheim? Yeah, they're letting in oranges from Azusa. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Now, let me read the paper, will you? Hmm. Kapok breaks records at Preakness. Say, Mr. Benny, where are you going with your violin? I'm going to take my lesson from Professor LeBlanc. Oh, uh, you're not kidding me. You're going downtown and playing some street corner. <laughs> now, Dennis, that's silly. Would you go downtown and sing on some street corner? I don't have to. I got two shows. Oh, <laughs> Hey, celebrity, this is West 6th Street. <laughs> Hold it, this is where I get off. So long, Dennis. Pierre. Pierre. Yes, Suzette? Pierre, I cannot understand you. You sit there with a sprained ankle, and yet there is such a happy look on your face. <laughs> Oh, oui, ma chérie. Because of this ankle, I do not have to give Monsieur Benny a violin lesson. Oh. Pierre, this Monsieur Benny, he is a moving picture star, no? Oui, he is a moving picture star, no. <laughs> he is on the radio. Oh, the radio. What program? Oh, you know the program that starts... Uh, Touche bas, touche tombe, c'est huit mots faire comme ça, ferme l'oké, touche votre gagneur, ferme l'oké, touche votre gagneur. Oh, yes, yes, I've heard that many times. Who can that be? Maybe it is the landlord. No, no, he would not come to a dump like this. I will see. Oh, how do you do? Uh, does Professor LeBlanc live here? Oui, I am Mrs. LeBlanc. Well, I'm Jack Benny. Sacre bleu. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> Suzette, who is he? Oh, it's me, Professor. I heard what happened to you, so I came over here for my lesson. Sacre bleu. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> professor, how's your sprained ankle? A dismal failure. <laughs> what? Nothing, nothing. If you are here for a lesson, let's get it over with. We. Oui. I mean, yes. <laughs> now, Professor, when you were giving me my last lesson, what were we doing? You were playing the Blue Danube, and I was picking up the dead flies. <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, after that. Anyway, what number, uh, what number do you want me to play today? The same one you have been practicing for weeks and weeks and weeks. Minuet Lantique. Oh, yes, yes. Here, I'll get my violin out of the case. Suzette, aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? I am not going out. You will in a minute. <laughs> well, here we are. Now, just a second, I... I better tune up. Does not make any difference. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I, I have to be in tune. Now, uh, shall I start with the minuet, Lanty? Start, start, start with anything. <laughs> okay. No, 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 Monsieur Benny. Every week you make the same mistake. 
How many times do I have to tell you it is not? Da 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 da. Oh, you have to slide. Da da da. Oh yes, yes. I'll uh, I'll I'll get it this time. Sacré bleu. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's too high. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Pierre. What is it, Suzette? Uh, vous la prenez à jouer au violon depuis deux ans. Je ne l'ai tendu qu'une fois, mais il est le plus mauvais joueur que j'ai tendu dans toute ma vie. Oui. Oh, uh, Professor, what did she say? It loses something in the translation, but it means you stink. <laughs> Sounds lovely in French. <laughs> shall I shall I take it again? We 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 we. Okay, sacre bleu. <laughs> His hair turned gray. <laughs> well, I'll take my lesson some other time. Goodbye. <laughs> increasing your own personal measure of financial security and independence. If you haven't been buying savings bonds regularly, start now. Put more opportunity in your future. Invest in United States savings bonds. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment. But first... L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Yes, it takes fine tobacco to make a fine smoke. And in each and every Lucky Strike, in every pack, in every carton, there's fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. No doubt about it. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco gives you all the real deep down smoking enjoyment you expect and deserve in your cigarette. So light up a Lucky. Light up a really fine cigarette and smoke that smoke of fine tobacco Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. So the very next time you step up to a cigarette counter, ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Good night, doll. Good night, everybody. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.